FM 95.4. Let's talk. Live on TFM and the TFM Facebook page. This is the live feed of TTV. Let's talk. Hello and welcome to the Midday Update. These are the top headlines from our newsroom today. Today we'll be looking into coronavirus management process in the center. Warning against violations ahead of night lockdown. Hotels asked to restrict access to private beaches. Vehicle parking meters to be removed across several locations in Muscat. Wildfire sweep large swaths in Syria. Commission cancels second Trump Biden debate. From IPL 2020. Kings 11 Punjab falls short of last ball miracle versus Kolkata Knight Riders in yesterday's match. From French Open 2020, Djokovic to lock horns with Nadal in men's final. These were the top headlines of the day. Let's see how the weather looks like in the Sultanate in our weather update. I'm Antra Bose with your daily dose of weather, and we're standing outside the TFM studio in Alkwer. Today we're talking about summer and camping. So the next time when you do go camping, or even if you're camping in your backyard, this is something that will come in handy. Use reflective sun shades. These covers reflect any sunlight back to the sky, leaving anything in the shadows relatively cooler. And here's what you need to do: leave at least 12 inches of space between the top of the tent and the sun shade. That will allow air to move freely and keep things way cooler. With that, we'll step inside the studio and we'll talk a little bit more about weather. Oman Meteorology and Public Authority for Civil Aviation have issued an alert indicating there will be a reduction in horizontal visibility during fog. Apart from this, the rest of the Sultan will see clear skies with the possibility of cloud formation over the Ahjar Mountains and adjoining areas, as well as the possibility of low-level clouds and fog patches over the Oman Sea and the Arabian Sea coast. With that, let's take a look at what the weather is going to be like in the rest of the Sultanate. Muscat will be sunny with temperatures between 34 to 26 degrees Celsius. Masandam will be sunny with temperatures between 37 to 27 degrees Celsius. North Albatana will be partly cloudy with temperatures between 34 to 27 degrees Celsius. South Albatana will also Will be partly cloudy with temperatures between 35 to 25 degrees Celsius. Al Buremi will be sunny with temperatures between 36 to 26 degrees Celsius. Al Dahira will be partly cloudy with temperatures between 40 to 27 degrees Celsius. Al Dakhla will also be partly cloudy with temperatures between 38 to 26 degrees Celsius. North Al Sharkia will be sunny with temperatures between 38 to 26 degrees Celsius. South Al Sharkia will be partly cloudy with temperatures between 33 to 27 degrees Celsius. Al Wusta will also be partly cloudy with temperatures between 35 to To 22 degrees Celsius, and though far will also be partly cloudy with temperatures between 28 to 19 degrees Celsius. Oman's largest online supermarket now has no minimum order limit. From grocery to household items, Rafiq has everything that you want. Enjoy worry-free shopping with over 8,000 products to choose from, and get it delivered straight to your doorstep. Rafiq, you order, we deliver. Welcome back to Time TV. TTV, you're watching Midday Update. Now, before we start the show, I mentioned earlier in the headlines that today we'll be talking about coronavirus management process in the center. And for that purpose, we have a very special guest joining us today. Let's welcome Dr. Umaima Ibrahim Khalfan Al Barashti, who's the Gen- general practitioner doctor in Hai Al Jamia Health Center, Ministry of Health. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us today in episode. Hello, Doctor Ramayma. I think we just lost connection with Doctor Ramayma, but uh, till the time we get back to her, we'll continue with our local news stories today. Once again, the Supreme Committee in the Sultanate has imposed a nice movement ban, starting today till October twenty-fourth, from eight p.m. to five a.m. daily. According to a statement issued by Oman TV, it said that all shops and public places will be closed during this time. 
Violators of the nighttime lockdown in Oman will be dealt with strictly, the country's public prosecution has also announced. In fact, Mohammed bin Said al Yahyai, the general director for the public prosecution in the governorate of Muscat, said that the public prosecution will deal firmly with the arrested and refer violators of these decisions for all legal measures to be taken against them. They will be imprisoned and sent to the competent courts. Public prosecution calls upon all citizens and residents to fully adhere to the commitment's decision and cooperate continuously in the interest of everyone. The Supreme Committee for Dealing with Coronavirus, as part of its ongoing measures under the chairmanship of Interior Minister Sayyid Hamoud bin Faisal al Busaidi, took a number of new decisions to help handle the situation in the Sultanate. The measures include a prohibition of movement and lockdown of all public places and commercial outlets from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. every night from Sunday 11th October to Saturday 24th October 2020, a ban on the use of beaches till further notice, and the reclosure of some businesses that were previously open but failed to stick to the conditions set by the committee. The department's concern will announce the details of such activities at a later date. The names and pictures of offenders who violate these instructions will also be published in the media. The Supreme Committee hereby urges all particularly young people to fully abide by precautionary measures at individual and collective level, all should refrain from family and social gatherings. The Department's concern will take legal action against all violators who breach the directives, according to the Supreme Committee. Buses will operate within Muscat Governorate until 6 p.m., said a Mawasalat statement. Regarding journey times for buses and ferries, the statement said that all the trips will have to reach their destinations by 6 p.m. Once again, we have Dr. Umayma joining us today. Um, hello, Dr. Umayma. Hello. Uh, I'm glad that you're back with us. Uh, I'm glad too. Thank you for the interesting discussion. Uh, so, Dr. Umayma, could you please uh, inform us, uh, brief us on your role? Uh, I'm a general practitioner, practitioner doctor who works in Hayy al Jam Health Center, which is IRI center, uh, responsible for treating patients with suspected case of COVID. Right. And uh, Dr. Umayma, in your time period, how do you and other medical staff manage the inflow of the coronavirus patients lately? Okay. Briefly, when any patient comes to our health center, first of all, he goes to the reception desk which is the medical record responsible for visiting visits of the patient, for the patient, for any patient uh, coming uh, for seeking uh, advice and the medical management. Uh, second step, uh, the patient goes to, is guided to go to triaging uh, room. Uh, at that room, the medical uh, staff and the staff nurse is responsible for uh, checking on the uh, patient and uh, look at the general uh, picture and condition of the patient and evaluate uh, the vitals, which are blood pressure, respiratory rate, heart rate, temperature, and uh, red blood cells, uh, and uh, random blood cells. And uh, according to the evaluation of the staff nurse, we'll know later on if the, this case is emergency case uh, or whether it is cold case. If, the, if it is emergency case, so the patient is guided directly to the doctor for urgent management. If it is like cold case, uh, we uh, ask the patient, uh, the staff nurse will ask the patient to fill a form uh, for biographic data and information and will be asked to wait for the doctor for his turn. Sec uh, third step is to go to the uh, doctor clinic. Uh, at the clinic, the doctor will evaluate the patient and will see the triage information and will examine the patient clinically and uh, will give the suitable treatment and management for him. So this is uh, briefly the inflow uh, for all patients who come to us. Right. Uh, doctor, what really happens and what is the procedure and the protocol when you receive the patient right away? Uh, uh, is there a protocol that all the medical uh, staff has to follow? Yes, there is, uh, there is a protocol uh, that we follow, uh, which is the classification of all patients into mild case, moderate case, and severe case. Uh, the mild case, when the patient uh, has no history of medical background and he's healthy, 
uh, not on medication, and he's under age of 60. And uh, uh, on evaluation, the temperature uh, is less than 38. RR is in normal range. Uh, saturation is more than 97 percent. And uh, um, he came. He is coming for with uh, mild symptoms like um, dry cough, a sore throat, like low grade fever. So in this situation, we can say that this is case. This case is mild and needs. Uh, it's like cold case and needs uh, regular treatment. Uh, second classification is uh, a moderate group, uh, which is uh, the group of people who uh, who are um, who are having uh, some background of medical uh, uh, medical problem like uh, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, uh, ischemic heart disease, respiratory disease. Um, people, some uh, of them are smokers, and also a female. If the female is pregnant, we all classify this as moderate case. Um, and also, if patient is complaining of uh, cough, like exogenal cough, uh, or shortness of breath, or high-grade fever, which is 38 or more. And if a staff nurse will measure the vitals, we'll see that the temperature is reaching 38 or more, and saturation is uh, is less than 97%, and if the RR is, um, is the 30, reaching 30 or more. So we can, at this situation, we can say that this case is moderate case and needs um, management uh, urgently. Uh, second, uh, third thing is the beer case, which is if the patient comes to us with um, critical uh, condition and uh, he's unstable at all and he needs um, emergency, and this we can see this this is emergency and needs referral to a secondary hospital or tertiary hospital. Uh, and uh, regarding the patients, uh, all patients, some of them we uh, can say that this patient needs quarantine. Uh, when um, we can say that this patient can uh, can has to be quarantined in some situations. Number one, if a patient is complaining of shortness of breath uh, or cough, even if mild, uh, or fever more than or uh, equal to 38. Uh, uh, in this situation, we can say that this case is possible case and has to be quarantined for 10 days. Uh, second thing, um, second group, uh, if patient uh, is uh, coming to us and saying, oh, I have to contact I have contacted a person um, who is positive, who became positive literally, um, even at home, like brother or son or sister, a close relative at home who became positive. So at that time, we have to keep the patient uh, on quarantine for 14 days. Uh, third thing that we have to keep in mind that some patients need swapping also. Uh, we have to test them uh, for COVID-19, some of them, not all of them. Who are they? Number one, some group of people who have renal dialysis, uh, which are uh, on regular dialysis, uh, like, every, um, like like weekly or three times a week, uh, who have the end stage renal disease or chronic renal disease. We have to swap them because they, ha- they are high risk patients. Number two, uh, if the patient has respiratory disorder and have background of respiratory disease or problem, problem like asthma, allergic rhinitis, like sinusitis or some patients are smokers. Uh, those group of patients, uh, we have to uh, swap them because we have to know whether this is COVID-19 or these are symptoms of their uh, condition, like asthma. So we have to have an idea at the beginning whether this is COVID, so we have to test them to know uh, whether this is COVID-19 or not. Uh, number three, uh, the third group that we have to swap is uh, medical staff, any medical staff who are exposed to patients and treating patients we, and having symptoms, we have to uh, swap them because they are, the most people are uh, kept in contact with uh, patients and they're getting infected with COVID-19. Right. So this is the, the, general, con- the general picture and uh, the idea about how the patients uh, inflow and the procedure that we follow and the criteria for each patient comes to us. Right, Dr. Mehmet, thank you so much for explaining us in detail exactly the protocol and the procedures that uh, you at the Ministry of Health and at the center follow. Um, you just mentioned about, uh, Dr. Maima, about the person, uh, if a family member is infected and there is a person who has in contact with the positive patient, you also keep that person in, under quarantine for 10 days. So, um, Dr. Maima, I just wanted to check with you, what kind of contact are we talking about? You know, sometimes... For example, if I'm sitting next to a person without knowing that person is tested positive in future in let's say two, three days or in a week's time, does that mean that I had a contact just by sitting next to him? 
or do I have to share like handshake or does the person has to really sneeze or cough around me to have that kind of to establish that contact when when doctors Actually, mention the contact what exactly is that contact a close contact meaning that uh, the patient is uh, living with um, the positive case has been li- living in the same house with the relatives uh, and uh, um, close contact with him, like uh, sharing same things and distance is less than two meters between the patient and the person. Uh, so uh, any patient have the chance of getting infection from a positive case, we, uh, we consider it as close contact. Okay. Uh, people who are living at the same house, it has to be living at the same house with the patient. Right. So if you are sitting, let's say you're sitting in a clinic and there is a positive patient sitting next to you as in like two meter distance or four meter distance, you would not uh, treat that as a close contact, right? No, because I'm, uh, I'm staffed there. I, uh, I am wearing full protection um, uh, from head to toe. I'm wearing um, a gown and a face shield. I have to take the protection, all uh, protection equipment that are needed to uh, to uh, be protected uh, against uh, COVID patients. So this is not considered as uh, a contact. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Mayor, because a lot of times, you know, people have this confusion, like if there is in the office, let's say, God forbid, there is a positive case, everybody goes into quarantine. Uh, thinking that they had a close contact. Is this something, Dr. Umayma, you think it's better to do? Like if in a, in a closed, let's say in, a, in an office, if there is a positive case, do you think all the staff and all the people working in the same building should undergo quarantine or they can take s- certain measures? No, if there is con- close contact with that person who became positive later on, mm. at the same office, at the same um, place, working together and sharing the same things, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, uh, other, otherwise, it's not considered as close contact. If uh, the contact we consider it as if uh, that person is staying at the same place with the with the person um, uh, all the time uh, along the working hours um, and sharing same things. So right. any chance of getting infection from that person, this is considered as contact. Right. Otherwise, um, other offices and other places, the same company, like at the same workplace, it's not considered as close contact. Right. Uh, so, Dr. Mayma, once the patient is just discharged from the clinic, from the center, do you all follow up or do you monitor that person's uh, patient's uh, health? Yes, there is a team dedicated for this, which is Communicable Disease Surveillance Team which is responsible for follow-up the patients uh, who are kept on quarantine and who are positive cases who are uh, be on quarantine as well. They do daily calls and they uh, check on their general condition and they ask them questions regarding uh, their health. And uh, if uh, any uh, patient, any one of them, uh, they got new symptoms or the symptoms became more progressive, uh, so they ask the patient to come to us to the health center for further assessment and uh, management. Uh, plus, the team is responsible also for the statistics and uh, of the patients who come to us, whether this is positive case of COVID or all cases like suspected cases who are in quarantine or probable cases who are also kept on quarantine. So um, there is a follow-up, like daily follow-up for all patients who are suspected to be COVID and who are positive, who are tested and became positive of COVID. So like daily follow-ups, any progression of any symptoms, they uh, just ask the patient to come to us. Right. Uh, now, Dr. Mayma, have you lately seen any increase in the COVID-19 patients since you're yes. closely working with the patients right now? Yes, lately. Uh, unfortunately, we have seen an increase in the uh, average or in the number of the patients uh, who, are, who became positive, uh, especially in the last one month. Uh, because so many reasons, uh, they, uh, because people are uh, gathering and so many places have been opened. And uh, so that's why the people are, are, are not, uh, are not care- very careful about the, uh, the uh, keeping distance, social distancing between themselves. So that's why it inc- decrease, increases the uh, chance of getting infection. At this point of to- time, Dr. Maima, what would you advise people to do? How to help reduce the number of cases? I know that Ministry of Health, the Supreme Committee, the Royal Oman Police, other authorities are constantly telling people to uh, keep social distance, to wear masks all the time, not to hold gatherings at home or even meet outside in a big gathering. 
So what really would you tell people? Because now you're saying that for the past one month, you have been seeing, unfortunately, an increase in the COVID-19 patients. So what should people really do at this point of time? So the main advice is to keep masks on. It's not over yet. Uh, number two is to avoid handshakes and wash hands each time, especially uh, when coming from outside. And um, even uh, uh, another thing that patients, some of them, uh, they uh, don't uh, keep on quarantine all the day of quarantine. They don't commit. Uh, they don't finish the quarantine days. Um, uh, they just gather and um, they don't consider, um, they don't keep on their, uh, their mind that they have to continue the full time of quarantine. Maybe even if they become better, oh, I'm better, I don't have symptoms now, I have to go, I, I want to go, I feel bored, I, I'm tired, I cannot continue. So this is a problem also. Um, and um, other patients, they have to also, um, my advice is when anybody uh, getting symptoms, uh, stay at home. Um, even if you, because you don't know this is COVID or not. So you have to stay at home and away from people and uh, take home remedies and uh, a lot of fluids, stay home, if, uh, take, a, take a rest as well. If you got any progression of the symptoms and you got worried, you can call the hotline of the Ministry of Health and the um, our health center hotline. So they can guide you what you do and where you go. And um, uh, another thing, avoid gathering, keep social distancing between each other, and uh, avoid crowds and unnecessary visits and uh, travel. One last thing, Dr. Umayma, is that, uh, you know, you are there in the, in the center all the time and you're seeing the cases since when it started. Do you think in the future, do we see an increased number, increasing number in the future as well? Or do you think with this lockdown, things would get better in, in the Sultanate? Actually, we don't have clear picture about what will happen in the future and what about the positive cases in the future, um, but we try to be to hope, and uh, we try to be positive about this issue, and we can work hard as much as we can to prevent the spread of the virus, and be aware, and be aware, and um, aware of people also and the patients about self protection and against infection. Um, uh, we we hope we hope that and we wish that the number of positive cases will decrease in the future. And we wish safety and better healthy life for everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Ramayma, for joining us today. Uh, it was indeed a very informative discussion with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So this was Dr. Umayma Al-Barashti joining us from the Ministry of Health who emphasized clearly on protecting yourself and uh, maintaining safe distance and uh, wearing masks all the time and avoid social gathering, even gatherings at home. Moving on with our local news for today, uh, the Ministry of Heritage and Tourism has published an announcement asking hotels and establishments to not allow guests to use beaches through the day, starting from 11th October, which is today. A statement issued online by the Ministry of Heritage and Tourism said, the Ministry would like to draw the attention of hotel establishments to not allow guests to use the beaches starting from Sunday, 11th October 2020, until further notice, in order to avoid legal accountability. Notice boards explaining this restriction is readable and visual formats must be put in Arabic and English. The ban is the decision of the Supreme Committee to deal with coronavirus issued on October 9, 2020. Now, starting from the 1st of November, vehicle parking meters across the, uh, the Muscat will be removed at a number of locations in the Governorate, Muscat Municipality said yesterday. Officials said that as of the 1st of November, all parking meters will be removed at each of the following, including the Commercial District, Commercial Square, Rui Market, Al Fursan Street, Matra Souk, and C Street and Wadi Al Kabir. However, all users are asked to rely on electronic reservation through the channels described as following. Number one, booking via text message. Send an SMS containing the vehicle number, code and the required number of minutes, multiple from 30 to maximum 300 to the number 90091. The user will receive a text message confirming the booking and including the ticket number, the vehicle number, code, and the time required to park. In the event that the user wants to extend the time, he or she must send another message to 90091 and follow the same previous steps. 
Number two, booking via Baldiati application. Now the Baldiati application for smartphones can be used to book parking by hours as well as to obtain parking permits for vehicles with the ability to renew permits and all users can pay fines through the application or inquire about pending fines. Lastly, number three, booking through Muscat Municipality website which is www.mm.gov.om and benefit from the service of issuing vehicle parking permits, renewing permits, paying fines or inquiring about them. It's time for a quick commercial break, but stay tuned as we have more updates coming your way from our international desk. Oman's largest online supermarket now has no minimum order limit. From grocery to household items, Rafiq has everything that you want. Enjoy worry-free shopping with over 8,000 products to choose from and get it delivered straight to your doorstep. Rafiq, you order, we deliver. Welcome back to TTV, you're watching Midday Update. And now from our international desk. Firefighters battled numerous blazes on Friday as wildfires renewed in forest areas in central and northwestern Syria, according to the state media and witnesses. The fires which broke out at midnight roared in the countryside of Homs province in central Syria, as well as in the coastal provinces of Tartus and Latakia in northwestern Syria. Flames have burnt large swaths of agricultural and forest areas in Latakia, Tortus and Homs. The fires also forced evacuations in a village in the countryside of Latakia and killed two people. Several people were also hospitalized after suffering from breathing difficulties. The new fire comes a month after wildfires gutted 7, kilometer, seven square kilometer in the countryside of Masyaf, area in Hama province in central Syria. Now the second debate between U.S. President Donald Trump and 2020 Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden won't take place, the Commission on Presidential Debates announced lately. The decision came after the panel moved to hold the second phase of scheduled for October 15th in Miami, Florida, virtually for the health and safety of all involved. Subsequently, the campaigns of the two candidates who qualified for participation in the debate made a series of statements concerning their respective positions regarding their willingness to participate in a virtual debate on October 15th, and each now has announced alternate plans for the date. The CPD said in a statement. It also added that it is now apparent there will be no debate on October 15, 2020. The nonpartisan committee said it will turn its attention to preparations for the final Trump Biden encounter scheduled for October 2022, October 22 at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee, with both candidates have agreed to take part in. Trump's, who, Trump, who's recovering from coronavirus infection at the White House, has made clear that he won't have a virtual debate with Biden. His campaign on Friday called the Commission on Presidential Debates biased, accusing it of protected Biden and preventing voters from hearing from the two candidates of president. These were the updates from our international desk. It's time for a quick commercial break, but don't go anywhere as we have more updates coming from our new sports desk. Oman's largest online supermarket now has no minimum order limit. From grocery to household items, Rafiq has everything that you want. Enjoy worry-free shopping with over 8,000 products to choose from and get it delivered straight to your doorstep. Rafiq, you order, we deliver. Welcome back, you're watching Midday Update and now from a sports desk. Kolkata Knight Riders known as KKR beat Kings Eleven Punjab by two runs or two centimetres in Saturday's Indian Premier League match. Glenn Maxwell with, came within tantalising reach of hitting a six of the last ball to take the match to a super over and the players waited anxiously after the last ball till replays zoomed in to show that the ball had landed just within the boundary. 
Kings 11 Punjab were consigned to their sixth defeat in seven matches on Saturday as they managed to lose yet another match from a seemingly comfortable situation. Now from French Open 2020, Novak Djokovic will be locking horns with Rafael Nadal in the final of the French Open as the Serbian emerged triumphant in the semi-final clash against Stefano City Pass. If Djokovic wins the French Open, then he will become the first man in half a century to win all four Grand Slams twice. In the match against City Pass, Djokovic won the first two sets comprehensively, but the fifth seed, City Pass, staged a comeback and won the third and fourth set, sending the match into the fifth and final set. In the final set, Djokovic staged a remarkable comeback to win 6-1 and set up a final showdown with Nadal on Sunday, October 11, 2020. With this, we have come to the end of the show for today, but stay tuned as we will be back again tomorrow at 2 p.m. with more updates your way. Keep watching TTV. You've just heard the live feed from the TTV studios on TFM 95.4. Let's talk.